Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. Let's listen. Ben Kavanaugh is one of the finest people that I've ever known. Uh, he's an outstanding intellect, an outstanding judge, hey. respected by everybody. <laughs> Never had even a, a little blemish on his record. Uh, the FBI has, I think, gone through a process six times with him over the years where he went to higher and higher positions. Uh, he is somebody very special. At the same time, we want to go through a process. We want to make sure everything is perfect, everything is just right. Uh, I wish the Democrats could have done this a lot sooner because they had this information for many months and they shouldn't have waited till literally the last days. They should have done it a lot sooner. Uh, but with all of that being said, uh, we want to go through the process. One thing I will say is that, uh, as I understand it, Judge Kavanaugh spent uh, quite a bit of time with Senator Feinstein, and it wasn't even brought up at that meeting, and she had this information. So you would have thought, certainly, that she would have brought it up at the meeting, not wait till everything's finished and then have to start a process all over again. But with all of it being said, we want to go through a full process. I have great confidence in uh, the U.S. Senate and in their procedures and what they're doing. Huh. And I think that's probably what they're going to do. They'll go through a process and hear everybody out. I think it's important. I believe they think it's important. But again, he is one of the great intellects and one of the finest people that anybody has known. You look at his references, I've never seen anything quite like it. So. Uh, They'll go through that process, and we'll get it done. Did you look at his reference from Judge Kozinski, who had to resign because he was, uh, you know, also a, a, a guy who liked to share porn with his female clerks that Kavanaugh clerked for? Did you, did you listen to his reference? You know, these people are just so disgusting. And let me tell you what happened in August. In August, this woman took a polygraph test, okay? That's what's different. She took a polygraph test in August because she knew she was going to get annihilated. She knew. She understood. Here is her attorney, Deborah Katz, uh, this morning saying that she is uh, that that Dr. Ford is willing uh, to testify under oath. One of the therapist's notes from a few years ago when she recounted this states that it was an attempted rape. My question to you is, does she consider this an attempted rape? She does. Um, she clearly considers this an attempted rape. She believes that if it were not for the severe intoxication of Brett Kavanaugh, she would have been raped. The other person who was in the room, a man by the name of Mark Judge, according to your, uh, your client, says this didn't happen. He said it's just nuts, this didn't happen. Your response? Well, he's also written uh, three books and many, many articles and uh, Twitter posts that have all now been completely uh, scrubbed from the public domain, where he acknowledges that that was behavior that, uh, uh, from his Georgetown prep school days, that they routinely engaged in tremendous drinking and really uh, inappropriate behavior, and that uh, the drinking was so severe that they were blacked out uh, regularly. That's now Ms. been scrubbed. Yeah. It, it, Ms. Katz, is your client willing to testify before the Judiciary Committee publicly and tell this story? She is. She's willing to do whatever it takes to get her story forth, yes. Wow. Does she think Judge Kavanaugh should withdraw his nomination? Is that what she hopes comes out of she's this? Not, she's not taking a position on that. She believes that these allegations obviously bear on his character and his fitness. And the denials, of course, also bear on her his character and fitness. Uh, Perhaps I it's just the wanna, it, yeah. Sorry, go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, she has taken a polygraph. She's a credible person. These Hello. are serious allegations, and they should be addressed. Yesterday, the White House would not even uh, have the nominee acknowledge whether he knew her, and he's not being forthcoming. She took a polygraph test. She submitted herself and her, her, her traumatic memory 
to a polygraph test before she came to the conclusion that she must testify because Brett Kavanaugh is lying, lying. He, he's denied, I mean, he, he said, I have never done anything like what the accuser describes to her or to anyone. Because this never happened, I have no idea who was making this a- accusation until she identified herself today. I see. So you and your friend would get blackout drunk and then use the condition of being blacked out drunk as a reason to say, I don't remember her. Yeah, because you were blacked out drunk. And for Donald Trump to put Judge Kavanaugh alongside of all his favorite good guys, really good guy, you should read his resume, said the same thing about Dr. Ronnie Jackson, who we learned was giving out prescription drugs on an airplane without, uh, you know, uh, prescriptions. Giving people, uh, you know, provigil to wake up and ambient to go to sleep. And and he's a great guy. And, uh, con- you know, Senator uh, Tester is the bad, bad son of a bitch. And he knows things about, uh, you know, Senator Tester. He's going to he goes out there and he's going to trash him. And he goes out there and he doesn't trash him because he doesn't have anything. And then Paul Manafort, he's a really good guy. He's a brave guy. He's not a flipper. Right? He's a good guy. Michael Flynn, he's a really good guy. Let Flynn go. Can you let Flynn go? He's a very good guy. All these people that Donald Trump vouches for all end up pleading guilty to something. Like I said, if you accept a nomination from the sleaze, you're going to wake up with fleas. Who would accept a nomination from an unindicted co-conspirator? And that is what the President of the United States is. In fact... It's what he is. Michael Cohen, his own lawyer, at his allocution, meaning when he pled out loud to the judge, uh, said that he he did these things, these criminal things, these fel- felonious things, at the request, at the behest of, and in by direction of Donald J. Trump, which makes Donald J. Trump an unindicted co-conspirator in a courtroom. Not in my mind, not in the press, not in the New York Times, not in the Washington Post, not in the Wall Street Journal, in a court. In a court. So why am I surprised? Why? This guy, this this Mark Judge, you want to see something? Okay, look at this. This here... This here is a collection of photographs taken by Mark Judge. These are the things he likes to take pictures of. Hmm, looks to me like they're all young girls. Very young, 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 young. Oh my God, what is she, 15? Is she 15? Yeah, she's 15. Young, oh look, she's in a bathtub. Young, young girls. These are on a hotel bed, really? These are all his photographs, okay? These are all the things that he had been posting, oh my God, that girl's like 13, on his Flickr page, okay? And these pages have been scrubbed, but not completely because here they are. This guy, Mark Judge, has written the following. Feminists argue that no means no, and that men need to understand that. But here's what I don't get. If there is a female and human body language that gives out cues to someone's mood, temperament, and level of sexual interest, does the body also have a language during sexual activity itself? If a woman does something in a porn movie, that signals that her body is something to be abused and violated in violent ways, that's just her choice. Suddenly, her body language is completely irrelevant and, quote, it's just porn, or even lie of lies, quote, empowering. And what about Slut Walk, the organization that fights rape but has marches where scantily dressed women protest that what a woman is wearing is never an excuse for rape? Of course, there is never any excuse to rape someone, but 
Can you believe there's a but after that? But it's possible to have two seemingly contradictory thoughts to be both equally true. There's never any excuse to rape, a crime that I think is almost akin to murder because the rapist kills part of the human soul. Oh, you think? And yet what women wear, and yet, what women wear and their body language also send signals about their sexuality. The signal is not that they should be raped, but if a posture while drinking coffee is indicative of the soul and personality within, then so is marching down the street in your underwear. I could march down the street stark ass nude, and that does not mean you can touch me, rape me, or, or do anything violent to me, ever. And then he quotes Father Paul Quay, a brilliant Jesuit priest. You know, I got to tell you, these Catholic boys, a lot of them have been really screwed up. In his book, The Christian Meaning of Human Sexuality, oh my God, Father Quay made a simple observation that struck me as deeply profound. He observed that during the sexual act, the woman, quote, opens herself up to the man, and the man, quote, penetrates the woman with his essence. With his essence? The act itself is one of mutual submission. The woman offers her beauty, tenderness, and love to the man, and the man puts his physical strength, courage, and love into the service of the woman. In other words, the bodies themselves have powerful symbolism. In fact, the body language during sex has a theological meaning that's even more powerful than a vibe given off at Starbucks. Oh, arch your back and bend your knee and pray for forgiveness, you freak. Oh, my God. And then he starts saying sexual progressives have to make up our minds. Like if we wear something that, 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 that might turn you on, somehow we're responsible for your essence being in my vagina. He also wrote for the Daily Caller and he wrote a book about his alcoholic past, about blackout drinking. That's not gonna make him a very credible witness over here. In his book, he refers to, because he's changed the names, instead of Brett, okay, instead of Brett Kavanaugh, he calls him, wow, who would ever connect these two names? Bart O. Kavanaugh. What is he, Sarah Palin talking to uh, Joe Biden? You remember during the debate, she kept calling Biden O. Biden? Yeah. He, she, in the book, he, he calls Brett Kavanaugh, Bart O. Kavanaugh, and quote, he puked in someone's car the other night and passed out on his way back from a party. Let him do a scene and dazed and confused, just keep him off the Supreme Court. Do you want a drunk who molests women on the Supreme Court? I swear to God, the only thing that separates him from Donald Trump is the drunk part. Oh, my God, this is frightening. This is just, I, I, I got to, and you know what? For, the, 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 the idea that this, that this has to get this far, knowing that he lied, <clears throat> we showed you him lying. We showed you him lying in 04. We showed you him being questioned by Orrin Hatch, who's legal counsel, Orrin Hatch's guy, on Orrin Hatch's staff, was one Manny Miranda who stole Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee's documents over a period of years handed them to Brett Kavanaugh to use. And Brett Kavanaugh swore under oath he never saw them. He didn't know anything about stolen documents until he read it in the newspaper many years later. Well, that's what Brett Kavanaugh is saying here now, too. I didn't know who she was till I read it in the newspaper. Funny, they have very few excuses, these frat boys. No, the reason why Kavanaugh shouldn't be confirmed is because Kavanaugh lies under oath and will again if we have hearings, just like Clarence. Do you remember Clarence? Here's Anita Hill. Let's refresh. I declined the invitation to go out socially with him and explained to him that I thought it would jeopardize 
at what at, at the time I considered to be a very good working relationship. I had a normal social life with other men outside of the office. I believed then, as now, that having a social relationship with a person who was supervising my work would be ill-advised. I was very uncomfortable with the idea and told him so. I thought that by saying no and explaining my reasons, my employer would abandon his social suggestions. However, to my regret, in the following few weeks, he continued to ask me out on several occasions. He pressed me to justify my reasons for saying no to him. These incidents took place in his office or mine. They were in the form of private conversations, which not, would not have been overheard by anyone else. You know how brave that is. My working relationship became even more strained when Judge Thomas began to use work situations to discuss sex. On these occasions, he would call me into his office for reports on education issues and projects, or he might suggest that because of the time pressures of his schedule, we go to lunch to a government cafeteria. After a brief discussion of work, he would turn the conversation to a discussion of sexual matters. His conversations were very vivid. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films involving such matters as women having sex with animals mm. and films showing group sex or rape scenes. He talked about pornographic materials depicting individuals with large penises or large breasts involved in various sex acts. On several occasions, Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Because I was extremely uncomfortable talking about sex with him at all, and particularly in such a graphic way, I told him that I did not want to talk about these subjects. They didn't believe her. Nobody believed her, and Clarence Thomas sat there and lied. Senator, I would like to start by saying unequivocally, uncategorically, that I deny each and every single allegation against me today that suggested in any way that I had conversations of a sexual nature or about pornographic material with Anita Hill that I ever attempted to date her, that I ever had any personal sexual interest in her, or that I in any way ever harassed her. Huh. A second, and I think more important point, I think that this today is a travesty. I think that it is disgusting. I think that this hearing should never occur in America. This is a case in which this sleaze, this dirt, was searched for by staffers of members of this committee, was then leaked to the media, and this committee and this body validated it and displayed it at prime time over our entire nation. How would any member on this committee, any person in this room, or any person in this country would like sleaze said about him or her in this fashion? Then don't or do this it. dirt dredged up in this gossip and these lies displayed in this manner? How would any person like it? The Supreme Court is not worth it. Hmm. No job is worth it. I'm not here for that. I'm here for my name, my family, my life, and my integrity. I think something is dreadfully wrong with this country when any person, any person in this free country would be subjected to this. This is not a closed room. There was an FBI investigation. This is not an opportunity to talk about difficult matters, 
privately or in a closed environment. This is a circus. It's a national disgrace. And from my standpoint, as a black American, as far as I'm concerned, it is a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves, to do for themselves, to have different ideas. And it is a message that unless you kowtow to an old order, this is what will happen to you. Oh, please. You will be lynched, destroyed, caricatured, by a committee of the U.S. U.S. Senate, rather than hung from a tree. Zam played the race card. What does that have to do with it? Well, Kavanaugh is not black; he can't play the race card. So what? He'll play the uh, "I was blacked out, I don't remember a thing" card. I mean, what did Anita Hill have to gain by telling the world that Clarence was a perv? Zero, nothing, nada, goose egg, squat, donut. And she was pilloried. And the same thing, this is why this woman did not want to put her name out there. She just wanted to be anonymous. She called a tip line at the Washington Post, an anonymous tip line. She told her house member, who has nothing to do with the confirmation, and then when it became obvious that this man was going to be confirmed, she said, whoa, wait, I'm going to go. I'm going to take a lie detector test. I'm going to get my uh, my notes from my therapy sessions so I have some documentation. Something. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.